So you want to read Terry Pratchett's Discworld, but you don't know where to start. Well, hopefully I can be of some help. I imagine you've heard the name Terry Pratchett before as he is quite the prolific author and the majority of his books are set in a universe of his own making, the Discworld. If you're not familiar, the Discworld is a disc <laughs> which sits on the back of four elephants that ride through space on the back of a giant turtle named Achuan. Within the Discworld there are a great many different cities and places a lot of which have a comedic twist on stereotypical conceptions of countries in our own world, such as the Jelly Baby, which is based on ancient Egypt, and that is only the beginning. And within these places there are a multitude of hilarious and fascinating characters which have their very own books and sometimes guest star in other books. There are more than 40 books in the Discworld series, however, the word series is somewhat misleading. All of these books are set on the Discworld, but you do not have to read them from the first published to the latest published. It's not really that kind of series. However, within the Discworld set of books, there are series in themselves. So, there are five main series along with a selection of standalone books. There is the Rincewind and Wizard series, there is the Death and Susan series, there is the City Watch series, there is the Moise von Litvig series and there is the Tiffany Aching series. And in a moment I will introduce you to the five books that introduce these independent series, all of which are excellent places to start with the Discworld. However, along with these five series, there are a number of standalone books in which the main characters are not main characters in any other books, although they might appear in other books. As like I said, all of these books are set on the same world, so there are reoccurring characters. Characters like Death, who is an anthropomorphic personification of a concept that does occur quite often, does pop in to a number of stories outside of his own series. However, you do not have to have read his series to read standalone books in which he appears in, and you do not have to have read the standalone books in which he appears in to appreciate his series. Before I tell you about the books in which I'd probably recommend or best to start with, I do want to mention that I do hold the belief that you can start with any book in the Discworld series and still appreciate and enjoy and laugh along with the story. However, I do appreciate when there is this number of books with the series or set in the same world that is a little bit intimidating and you might be unsure of whether you've missed something that happened before when you start with a book. So here are my recommendations for beginners with the Discworld series. It might be also important to add that I haven't actually read all of the Discworld books but I have read over half so I am deeply immersed in the world and feel I can at least give you a few recommendations. The first book published in the Discworld was The Colour of Magic and this is a Rincewind and Wizards story which is part of its own series. Series. So if you want to start with the Rincewind and Wizards series, then you can go ahead and start with the first Discworld book. However, I would recommend that you read these alongside one another, or, well, you read this one and closely afterwards read The Light Fantastic, as this book has literally no plot. And Terry Pratchett himself acknowledges this, so he then wrote The Light Fantastic, which has a lot more of a story and a narrative to follow the characters in. So these ones are really a pair. Because of this, however, they might not be the ones that you want to start with and you definitely don't have to start with them just because they were the first ones written. Instead, you may want to start with the Death series, which begins with Mort, which follows Death appointing an apprentice for the first time, whose name is Mort. Ha, ah, lots of puns in these books. Then there is also the City Watch series, which follows the police service-esque body that patrol Ankh Morpork, which is the capital of the Discworld and mimics London, and that begins with Guards Guards. Then there is the Witches series, which begins with Weird Sisters, and this follows a sisterhood of three witches, including the infamous Granny Weatherwax, joined by Nanny Og and Magret. Then this, I might add, is my all-time favourite Discworld book and one of my favourite books of all time in general, and that is Going Postal. And this follows our main character, Moise von Litvig, who is a ex, somewhat ex, con man who is trying to go straight, really not through his own choice. And in Going Postal, Moise von Litvig is charged with rebuilding the post office in Ankh Morpork. And the last series is a slightly different one, and it's his YA series, which is the Tiffany Aching series. So these ones are aimed at a slightly younger audience, which might be a good way to introduce yourself to Discworld if you do enjoy your young adult books. And these are the Tiffany Aching books. 
I don't actually have the first one on me as I've lent it to a friend, but it is The Wee Free Men. This was actually the series that got me into the Discworld, although I started reading it when I was around 10, so as a 10 year old this was perfect for me. The Tiffany Aching series follows a young witch new to the craft, Tiffany Aching, and her adventures in the Discworld, often with the help of some little Pictsies named the Wee Freemen, who are stereotypical little Scottish crazy men and they are very good fun. Now all of those books make excellent places to start as they are the beginning of their own series and you do not have to read any other Discworld to read them. There are however some standalone books in the Discworld series and I will show you a couple of my favourite standalones that I think you can read without any basis in the Discworld at all. First is one of my all-time favourite Discworld books and that's Equal Rights. This is sometimes bunched in with the Witches series. However, I consider it a standalone and I know a lot of people that consider it a standalone and its links to the Witches series are tenuous. It does star some of the witches, as I've said, they are reoccurring characters, however, they are not the main characters. You do not need to be familiar with them to read this book and you do not need to read this book to start Weird Sisters as the plots do not follow on from one another. However, Excellent standalone book and if you want to start with this one then go ahead, I'd highly recommend it. This is about the first female wizard in the Discworld. Then another standalone that I think makes an excellent starting place is Pyramids and this is the book that is set partially in The Jelly Baby based on ancient Egypt and follows the son of the country's last pharaoh who has recently passed away and his ascension or attempted ascension to the throne. And the last standalone that I'm going to mention is The Truth. And this follows the first newspaper to hit the Discworld. And as you can see, this is the 25th Discworld novel. However, don't need to have read any other Discworld novels to have read this. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for those of you that haven't started with the Discworld or have maybe picked up one of the books and not been caught up in the world and want to try again. I wish you luck with your adventure as it will be a spectacular one and a hilarious one as I am a massive fan of Terry Pratchett's comic fantasy world. If you have a favourite Discworld book, then please let me know what it is. I hope you enjoyed this video and until the next one, happy reading. Bye!